Today on the Transplant Helper, I'm going to be sharing with you three things you really need to consider if you're a transplant patient, therefore immunosuppressed, especially given our current situation. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle, and today we're going to be discussing being immunosuppressed, particularly those immunosuppressant drugs, what they're doing to your body, how they're affecting your body, and really talking about how much at risk we really are given the current situation. Now, with that being said, I'm going to divide this up into basically three facts that you can just kind of roll through, most of which you'll totally understand, but I think one of them, especially the one right in the middle, you may not have considered all that much and which just started out by jumping in fact number one which you already understand you are immunosuppressed therefore you are at a higher risk for infection now i tried to emphasize in that the word are because it doesn't really matter about the current situation as far as whether or not we were at higher risk or not for example when this wasn't going on three, four, five, six months ago, or however long it's been since your transplant, you were already at a higher risk of infection, whether it's colds, flus, viruses, germs, bugs, whatever you want to call it. You and I as post-transplant patient, because we're being immunosuppressed in order to keep our body from rejecting our organs, uh, obviously we're at more or a higher risk to catch anything. Now, I'm not saying that to minimize what's going on right now. Certainly, this is kind of a uh, a scary thing. It's certainly something that can cause us to be very concerned. Some are even panicking over it, that sort of thing. I'm not trying to minimize that. I'm just trying to remind you that you were at risk to catch anything and everything anyway. Now, this, this will be more severe. I give you that. This will be more you know, problematic. And, you know, there's just, again, you could be, I'm, I'm afraid of this to an extent, but keep in mind, you've, you've been that way. I'm about to be seven years post-transplant for, so for seven years, I've been, you know, suppressed. And for seven years, I've been at risk to catch pretty much anything and everything. And I have to admit the things I have caught, whether it's the stomach virus is the one that always comes to mind or the flu or, or the common cold or even sinus infections, it is a whole lot harder to fight those things and a whole lot harder to get past those things being that I've been and you are immunosuppressed. So that's just very simple. You understand that. But here's what the second thing we need to consider. And that is if you're immunosuppressed, you may not be as immunosuppressed as you think you are. Now I say that because I've seen so many times beneath my comments, particularly over on social media, particularly on Facebook, even more so in Facebook groups, all of us are kind of standing up for ourselves, and we certainly should, and we're trying to remind everyone around us that they need to be keeping themselves at a distance. They need to be washing, you know, masking all the things that we're being asked to do right now, kind of quarantining themselves off so that they don't put us at risk for this, you know, this terrible thing that's going around. But... What we need to understand is that the statements I've read, and there have been many of them, I'm not knocking anybody, I've made this statement before, but I've read a number of statements where people say basically, I have zero immune system now. I get that, and that certainly you know gives the extreme so that people can comprehend and understand what we're dealing with every day, but it is not the fact that you or I or anyone has zero immune system. And the way we know that is if you had zero immune system, you would have zero immune response. Therefore, in all reality, you would never have symptoms of getting sick. You know, the main symptom of getting anything that seems problematic or dangerous, like, like a flu or a virus or whatever, it's going to be running a fever, okay? And so if you're not running much of a fever, that would be an indicator. If you feel like absolute trash and your fever is just very, very minimal, if not non-existent, that is an indicator that you don't have much immune system. But if you had zero immune system, basically it just kill you. I mean, I'm just going to say the truth. I just put it plainly. If you had no immune system, it would take a matter of hours or days. And it wouldn't matter what you got, that'd be it. Life would be over you know, it's just, it is what it is. But the truth is, depending on how far are we, we are, I can't say that, but de depending on how far, depending on how far we are out of transplant, that has a lot to do with predicting 
where our immune systems will really be, okay? And I say that because, let's take, for example, if, if someone is one week post-transplant, obviously, there are going to be a ton of immunosuppressant drugs at very high doses. Therefore, yeah, they're going to have a very, very minimal immune system. That's going to be extremely problematic. Their body is going to have little or no defense to fight anything. However, if you're like a year out or two years out or three or like me, almost seven, or some of you are at 20 or 30 years out, you have been allowed, because of your medications being brought down, the doses being lowered, you have been allowed to rebuild to an extent some of your immune system. Therefore, that's why you and I, as post-transplant patients who are a little bit farther out, we have more immunosis response to things. You know, we do wake up feeling achy. We do wake up running fevers. We do wake up, you know, having some symptoms and that sort of thing because our bodies are starting to fight. And depending on how far you are out of transplant and how much those medications have brought down, have been brought down, you have been allowed to have more and more immune system. Now, I'm not implying in that that you're going to be able to fight off anything and everything. You're probably going to need some medications. You're going to need some assistance with that, especially, again, given the current situation. You may need a hospitalization to deal with that. But in general, the farther out you are, the more your immune system has been able to bring bring to be brought back. They found a better balance of keeping your organ from going into rejection versus keeping infection uh, at bay, either from your body or at least being able to handle it if it enters your body, okay? So just understand that fact. You may be immunosuppressed, but maybe not as much as you think. Now, third fact right here, and this is for those who are really early on, I would say within the first year, maybe two years sometimes post-transplant, you actually have some medications more than likely on board that can help you in most situations. Now, I say most because they may not help you at all given the current situation, but you know, I can remember post-transplant, for example, for months after transplant, and one of the medications even went on for a year, and then it ultimately was extended for another year, I took things like Bactrim. That's just a basic uh, run-of-the-mill antibiotic. And I took Bactrim every single day post-transplant. That was just a kind of, you know, keeping in check any of the bugs and stuff that I was coming in contact with, the common colds, that sort of thing. That was what that was about. You know, again, my immune system was lowered by these immune suppressant drugs, but they kind of gave me a little boost. They gave me a little assistance by giving me the Bactrim that kind of helped out. In addition to that, one of the medications I took uh, post-transplant that lasted a year, and then, as I said, was later extended even farther than that, was a drug called Valcite. Okay, now Valcite was really put into place to help us deal with, which many of us had, and it's it's terrible to get, you know, to get uh, symptomatic about it, but giving us assistance with fighting off CMV. But what that drug was, was basically an antiviral drug. So not that it really handled everything, and I'm not implying it will handle this either, but, you know, in general, if you took Valcide every day, if you took an antiviral drug every day, there were a lot of viral type infections that were going on around you that you may have been, had a little defense against. Even though you didn't have your natural immune system intact like it would be, you had a little natural barrier there at a fence to help you fight. And so taking Valcide, taking Bactrim, taking other medications post-transplant actually gave you a little assistance and kind of helped to keep those things at bay. You say, well, Jim, why do you even discuss this today? Because I know you and I, we certainly, certainly need to be careful. We need to be cautious. We need to be considerate of other people. And more than that, they need to be considerate of us in the situation we're in. Because yes, we're immunosuppressed. Yes, we're at higher risk. But at the same time, depending how far are you, you are out of transplant, the risk is not as maybe severe as you might already assume. So I'm saying that to try to calm myself, to try to calm you, to try to comfort us a little bit and say that, yeah, this is certainly a situation we need to be aware of. We need to be taking every precaution possible, you know, all that. But at the same time, to say I have no immune system, not exactly accurate because at seven years out almost, I've got a decent immune system and generally we do pretty well. Now, with that being said again, all I can remind us to do is to, you know, do what they're requiring us. If they're asking us, and they are right now, to kind of keep our distances, if they're asking us to kind of self-quarantine, which is the safe bet, especially for me and you, uh, if they're asking us to be more diligent and to encourage others more to be more diligent about washing up and such, do that, and uh, let's just hope and pray that this thing passes as quickly as it can, that this thing just gets, you know, just gets over with, 
And let's hope and pray that everyone comes away with as much help as possible. I really appreciate you watching this video today. I really appreciate you watching all of my videos. Many of you do that. I appreciate you being a subscriber. So if this video has helped you out in any way, a big thumbs up would be very appropriate for YouTube to understand that you're enjoying the video. If not, give me a thumbs down. I'll take that too. I'll, I'll cry a little bit, but I'll take it if that's what it is. Nonetheless, thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, stay stronger, friends.